If you do e-learning narration, you know that marking files and splitting them into separate files is part of the workflow that really can slow e-learning narration down. If you haven't seen Dan Leonard's video on splitting files based on markers in Twisted Wave, and you're a Twisted Wave user, then you should definitely go ahead and go check that out over at eWabs or on YouTube. Just search Dan Leonard and e-learning narration or markers in Twisted Wave. Twisted Wave is great, but one of the problems with Twisted Wave is that it's Mac only. Um, and as you can see from my video, I'm also on a Mac. Uh, but I like to kind of keep in my pocket tools that I know that'll work cross-platform. And Adobe Audition is one of those tools that's very standard in the voiceover industry. And we can do the same kind of thing with markers and splitting files uh, for e-learning narration. So I'm going to show you today a workflow using markers and splitting files in Adobe Audition. Now, as Dan did in his video, which is where I actually learned this, one of the techniques of adding markers that he does is really, really neat, where you place a marker and then select half a second or one second on either side, as you see on the screen here, and then copy that to your clipboard. And that's going to save you the time of adjusting and placing markers over and over again, because, you know, as with most e-learning narrations, there's going to be many, many slides. Um, so by placing the marker one time and then uh, copying that marker with some space around, I usually do a one second or a half second on either side, and then just hitting copy, copying that to your clipboard. Now, as I go along through my narration, if I'm um, cleaning it up, as I'm going along, then I can find the next place where the next slide needs to be. And usually when I narrate, I will have uh, slated each slide individually. So I'll say slide one, and then read slide one, and then slide two, and then narrate slide two, and so forth. I'm sure you guys all do this. Um, and so all I need to do is when I find the next slate here, select the slate along with all the space beside it, and hit paste. And now that's going to paste my marker in, okay? So not only does it put the proper duration of silence at the beginning of that segment and at the end of the other segment, but it also places the marker in, okay? And then the next thing I, can, I need to do is I need to come down to the left side here, and I have my markers uh, palette open on the left. And as you can see, each marker comes in with the same default name of marker 01, because that's what the marker was called when I copied it originally. So as soon as I paste it in, I'm going to come over to the panel here and just rename that. I'm, I'm going to rename this one slide 24. And then I'll continue going through my narration, cleaning it up until I get to the next slate. And then I'll do the same activity. I'll select the slate along with the empty space alongside of it. I'll go ahead and hit paste. And again, this puts in marker 01. And I'll change the name over here to slide 23 and continue. I'll continue with this workflow, working through my entire narration, listening for the slates, and then replacing the slates with the markers, and then renaming the markers. I'll meet you at the end once I'm done going through the entire thing and placing all my markers, and I'll show you how to take the next step of exporting based on markers. All right, I've gone ahead and skipped ahead here, and I've already gone through, I've placed all my markers for all my slides, as you can see here. And I've gone through my mastering process. So I've applied some EQ, I've applied some compression. And so now I'm ready to split out the slides according to the markers. And this is the really, really cool step that's going to save you a lot of time if you haven't learned how to do something like this before. So I'm going to come to my markers tab. And first, one thing I want you to notice is that if you look down at the bottom, the last marker I've placed just says end. Even though my last slide there um, is slide 23, and I've obviously narrated these out of order for some reason. Um, but my last slide there is slide 23 at 15 minutes and 20 seconds. And then I've placed a marker called end. And it's important in Audition, and I know in other programs that I've used markers before, I don't have to do this. But in Audition, it's important that you do place an end marker. Audition needs to know where the last segment ends, and you'll see why in just a second. So it's important to place a final marker. It doesn't have to be called end. It just needs to be one more marker. It could be whatever the default is. It could be last marker. It doesn't even matter what that marker is called. I call it end just to kind of keep things tidy. So I'm going to select all. I've come over to my markers and hit select all. And you can see that it's kind of selected. It's highlighted all those markers over in the, in the markers palette there. And then I'm going to come up to the markers toolbar and click on this tool here called merge selected markers. And that's going to do something interesting. If you notice right now, all my markers have a marker name 
and a start time. You can see the start times of all the markers there. But what this is going to do is actually convert them to regions. So it's not just starting points, but it will be starting and ending points. So let me click on it. And now you can see the markers themselves on the screen have changed into these dotted kind of chain looking lines. Um, but you can also see now in the markers palette that every marker has a starting time and an ending time. So it's not just markers that are marking a certain time, but markers that are marking specified regions, each with a start and an end time. And you'll also notice that that last slide is gone. The one that said end, because, uh, because that was just showing where the last region ended. And instead of having a marker at 1554, it just shows that that's where slide 23 ends, at 1554. The next step then is to go up to your file menu, go to export, and go to audio within range markers. And that's why it was important that we did that uh, command where we merged the markers, because that made it from marking particular points in the audio to marking ranges. And that's how we can export it. Be sure to check use marker names and file names if you want to do that. I like that step because it saves me from having to go through and name them all over again. And that's the whole point of this. I want to be able to do something one time and have the automated process finish it all for me. So I make sure to name the markers what I want the files to end up being. Most of my clients want the word slide along with the number. So slide 10, slide 11, etc. Browse to the location that you want to save the files to, which is all pretty standard. If you're used to Audition, you understand this whole process. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here with the title of the project that I'm working on. In this case, Devon Cybersecurity. And then within there, I'm going to create two folders. I'm going to create one for the WAV files. And then later I'll create one for MP3 files as well. I'll go ahead and open that folder. Make sure to select WAV PCM from my audio format. And I'll check my settings just to make sure they're correct. And then export those. Takes a couple seconds. And now all those WAV files have been exported according to the markers that I've already placed. We'll do that again. Export audio within range markers. Browse to my project folder again. And this time I'm going to make a new folder called MP3 files. Most of my e learning clients like to have both the WAV files and the MP3 files. So I'll choose that. Choose MP3 from my audio format dropdown. And I'll adjust the quality setting to be 256. And again, just as before, export all those files. Again, taking like three seconds. Let's go out and check and see if it worked. So you can see here, I've got my MP3 files all split according to the names, and I've got the WAV files all split according to the names. Those little PKF files are really annoying. So I'm gonna open up the WAV folder and filter just for the PKF files. This by default searches my whole Mac. So I'm gonna click WAV files. That's the name of the folder. I'm gonna select all those files and just trash them. I don't need those PKF files. And my client certainly doesn't need those PKF files. So now you can see I have all the WAV files and all the MP3 files split according to the names that I put on the markers. Now this is ready to deliver to my client. So I go ahead and right click on the file folder or control click or two finger click if you're on a trackpad. And from the sub menu, just choose compress and whatever the name of the folder is. And that'll create a nice tidy little zip file that I can then send off to my client. So that's the workflow in Adobe Audition for creating markers and then using those markers to export your e-learning projects out so that you can split those files into multiple files in one step. You saw it just took about three seconds in the export. And because I had named them correctly as I went, I didn't have to go back through and rename all those files individually. And it took very little extra time to create two different versions, one WAV file version and one MP3 file version. So I hope that's helpful for you in your e-learning workflow.